So Peter and John, and they're going somewhere. Now remember, they live in Jerusalem at this time. This isn't long after Jesus has gone, and there's a big church starting to grow. People are gathering together in their houses. People are loving to hear the word of God. Anyone know where they're going? To the temple. Good, Ernie. They're going to the temple. And what are they going to do at the temple? To pray. To pray, Eden. Good job. They're going to pray, and that's their daily routine. You've all got routines, haven't you? A routine means the stuff you do at the same time every day. So there they go, they're off to the temple. But there's someone else there uh, who they meet. Who do they meet on the way, Ernie? A crippled man. A crippled man? And what's the man doing? I'm uh, begging for money. Begging for money. So here we see the crippled man who's going to be begging for He's not able to use his legs. He can't use his feet because his feet have never worked. His legs have never worked. Why do you think he's begging at the temple? Why is he there, do you think? What do you think, Eden? Because most people go there. Good answer. There's going to be a lot of people there. It's a very busy place. Why else do you think? Why is he at the temple, maybe, and not at the marketplace? Or maybe at the sports field? Why do you think he's at the temple? Oh, people will pray, pray for him. Well, people will mm. go. When you go to pray, it kind of puts you in the mood to get close to God. And when you're close to God, you feel a bit more generous. So he's probably thinking, these Christian people, if I hang around the temple, they're nice people. And if they're going to go and pray to God, there's more chance I'll get money off these people than pay maybe if I go to the marketplace. So he's quite clever. And his family or his friends, we're not sure who it is, but somebody puts him there because he can't walk there. They lay him there at three o'clock every afternoon when all the people come in to pray. And as he sees Peter and John coming by, he says something to them. What does he ask them? What does he ask them, Eden? May I please have some of your money? And I think they're thinking to themselves, this man's never spoken to us before. Maybe... Because he's asking us for something, maybe that's God's way of saying to us, this man needs your help. Well, the man is saying, have you got any money? And they're thinking to themselves, well, we haven't got money, but I wonder if there's something we have got that's even better. What could they give him that's even better than money? What do you think, Eden? Jesus. They could give him Jesus. And, and how would they show Jesus? How would they show what Jesus could do in this man's life? How do you think, Grace? Because well, he, he, can, he can make him stand. He can make him stand. And so they look at him and he looks at them. And Peter says to him, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth walk. How can you say walk to a man who's never walked? He's going to help the man, but he's expecting the man to do something for himself. He is going to help him, but the man has to show something. What does the man have to show? He has to show faith. He has to show that he believes in Jesus. And I think that's why the disciples were looking at this man's eyes to think, is there some faith here? Is this a man that maybe God wants to do something special with? And so they're looking at him and they're thinking, can we see faith? But it's not faith in Peter because Peter's got no power. He's just like us. He's just a regular person. Whose power does he ask him to have faith in? Yes. God. In God. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So Peter, he stretches down. Do you think he would have heard about Jesus? I think he would have done, because that man's been there every day for his whole life, probably. And Jesus used to come to the temple. So when he hears Jesus of Nazareth, he's thinking to himself, I remember that man, even though he's dead, he's the man who used to be able to do what? Heal. heal people. He could heal the sick. He could heal lepers. He could take demons out of people. So Peter starts to lift his hand up. You see what's going on here? Peter lifts his hand up and as he does, the man, oh, he's stiff, he's never walked before, he's using fingers and, and feet that he's never been able to use before, and suddenly Peter raises him. Now, Peter hasn't done it by his strength, he's done it in the name of Jesus. What else can this man do? Yes, he can walk, and what else can he do? 
He can jump and he can dance and he can leap and walk some more. And he's so grateful. What's the first place he goes to? The church. The temple. He says to these two, I'm coming with you to the temple. Why is he going to go to the temple with Peter and John? Why do you think? To pray. To pray. And what's he going to pray to them? Oh, Lord, thank you for this day. What's, he going to, how's his, what's his prayer going to be like? Thank you for letting me walk. Thank you. I can walk. I've never been able to walk before. Look at this. I can do amazing things. And prayer doesn't have to be serious and all kind of solemn. I bet that man's just running around like crazy saying, look, everyone, God healed me. God can do incredible things. I've been healed. I can walk in the name of Jesus. And it's not just him who's pleased. He doesn't look very pleased there, does he? But believe me, he really is pleased. Lots of people come running because they think, well, what's all the commotion? What's all the, what's all the fuss? And they all come running around. They all recognise him as the man who day after day used to get lame at the temple gates. And they think, whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. Has this guy been fooling us all these years? Look, he can walk. Well, they don't think that. They realise that Peter and John have done something incredible in the name of Jesus. And it shows... But even though the people hoped that Jesus would never be mentioned again, all his enemies, now suddenly they're having to realise, oh no, the power of Jesus has now spread through the people who belong to Jesus and the work of Jesus is going to continue.